All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a finally Friday. Made it to the weekend, made it through the work week, and uh, got a couple days off ahead of us. And if you're lucky, you got Monday off as well with the uh, uh, three-day weekend upon us as well. Uh, it is about 12.08 p.m. California time, August 30th, 2024, September. Goodness, right around the corner. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.3 earthquake into the area of California. Uh, now the live stream is up and running. It looks like it went down about 1 o'clock in the morning for some reason. You know, it's just uh, whatever the reason being, it happens on occasion there it seems like. So we'll uh, just get it back up when we can. Been a little bit busy this morning, so uh, just now got it up and running. Uh, there's the larger activity last night. That's 6.0 coming into the Curl Kamchatka Trench up here. We did see a little bit of um, aftershock sequences there. Looks like a 4.3 uh, following that six-pointer. Uh, not a whole lot of adjustment since then along the western areas of the Pacific Plate. Uh, did see some a uh, little bit of uptick here across the Tonga Trench with some deeper activity returning to the region there. Uh, let's take a look at California, see what's going on out here along the west coast. We've got Nevada popping out here, uh, and quite a bit within the last hour. A bunch of ones stirring up out here. And this area has been a uh, an area of interest here recently with, uh, looks like, well, about over 100 earthquakes in the last couple days in this area of Nevada. We've got a couple different uh, swarming regions in a linear fashion out here. There is various fault systems out here, such as the Stonewall Mountain Fault and a couple other ones out here as well. Um, and then you got these down here, this little uh, Stonewall Flat Faults. A couple different segments of it showing some activity as well. So that's a lot of earthquake activity, 145, with the largest being a 3.2. And that was uh, about three days ago or so. Uh, since then, we've just seen uh, a continuous earthquake activity out here. I don't believe it's volcanic activity unless this is a super volcano caldera, which probably isn't. Um, definitely related to stress events out here because if you put together the activity that we've seen uh, further down south around Las Vegas, areas up north here around Walker Lake, uh, it just it it makes sense here that this is pure stress related events out here. Uh, that's kicking up out in the uh, Nevada desert area. And, um, of course, all that's a sign here of the uh, company strain that's produced along the plate boundary. We've seen various areas here of California experience some uptick here recently in the last few weeks. And uh, now we got Nevada kicking up here. So got uh, got to keep an eye on things out here. Elevated activity means the elevated possibility of seeing some larger, uh, larger scale quake activity. Uh, the question is, where is it going to be? Lots of uh, lots of movement out here recently in the Southern California area and Nevada. Uh, these earthquakes coming in all over the place, um, from the surface level down to about eight miles below the surface there. But hard to say. Um, you know, these a lot of these quakes have not been reviewed by a seismologist. That one's been reviewed, so it looks like they're slowly starting to catch up on them. Maybe they're starting to catch the attention there of the uh, seismologist with the USGS. Because uh, it is kind of important, right? 100 earthquakes, uh, well, 145 earthquakes in the last few days uh, is not a little deal. That's a lot of earthquake activity out here. So something's got to be causing it, whether it's general stress uh, from the plate boundary over here, stretching inland, or something else is going on out there. There's a lot of earthquake activity. Uh, here's a region around Bakersfield today couple smaller quakes in the one range still seeing some aftershock sequence there following that 5.2 earthquake a couple weeks back now Ridgecrest area still seeing some movement as well uh, quite a few ones and some twos out there is in the uh, mix one earthquake uh, 1.4 outside the corona area uh, southern california region fairly shallow looks like about 0.3 miles below the surface there a third of a mile that's a uh, uh well 0.3 miles here below the surface that's a uh Pretty shallow earthquake there. Surface quake. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the Los Angeles area for now. And far as the plate boundary itself, the San Andreas Fault, it is sleeping for now. Well, let's hope that it stays that way. But we know 
Uh, the longer we put this out off, the more likelihood that we're going to see a much bigger quake take place out here. So it's coming. It is coming. It's been over 300 years since we've seen a full rupture out here along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And as I keep saying, that's capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. Bay Area here in Northern California, a little 1.6 off the uh, yeah, Greenville Fault there in the Delta, it looks like. Nothing big going on across the Bay Area for now. Um, southern end of the Cascadia, a couple smaller earthquakes, including a three-pointer out here today. Right smack dab on the southern end here of the Cascadia Mega Thrust Zone. 11 miles deep. That is uh, right around where the locked area is. So a little bit of activity stirring up there. Uh, if anything, I, I definitely think that the southern end is capable of producing a, uh, a fracture a quake here or a uh, section quake here indicating that uh, instead of a full rupture which was 324 years ago we get these intermittent uh, ruptures down here along the southern end which can stir up around an 8.4 earthquake and uh, we've noticed a lot of trimmer activity out here recently a lot of uh, divergent zone boundary activity out here as well in the uh, these ridges this is the separation of the seafloor adding further strain out here look at all those ridges building up and obviously it's not building up because there's no strain it's building up over time because of the strain out here so ultimately this area i feel um, has a high higher likelihood of seeing a larger quake compared to for example a full rupture out here which you know the intervals can run between 260 and 500 years and the last one for a full rupture was uh, 324 years ago. There's that earthquake. Um, this one about 15 miles deep here into the Cascadia as well. The subdu subduction zone quake underneath this area for a 1.2 from yesterday. Nothing big, but we are noticing a little bit of inland earthquake activity as well. 2.7 from last night. Uh, about 6 miles there below the surface. And a handful of smaller quakes up here as well through the Pacific Northwest. So overall, you know, the pattern out here across California and the West Coast in general is still amplified. Um, you know, whether we're seeing intense warming out here in certain areas or away from the plate boundary, it's still an area to watch here. And uh, I think we're going to see something larger take place soon out here. Sooner rather than later. Uh, some earthquake activity out in the oil fields out here today in Texas and Oklahoma. Nothing big. Some twos and ones out there. Uh, the North Atlantic out here has seen a little um, earthquake activity in the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. This uh, area, I think it was last year, I think it was last year, seen a whole bunch of fives and sixes out here, and then it just calmed down completely. Um, it's been awfully quiet out here recently, but uh, 5.6 coming in here earlier this morning. That is south of Iceland, a considerable distance there. Uh, let's see what we got here for the Middle America Trench southward. A lot of older quake activity here today. It looks like um, there was some further movement here into the Baja California region. Uh, I'm seeing a four and a couple other threes up there as well. Nothing showing up here from the USGS map. One earthquake, 2.6 from last night, but there's some uh, some four activity up here. It looks like on the globe, a uh, 4.0 and some uh, threes in there as well. So that's you know active obviously there's earthquake activity taking place here in this region that uh you know following events like that could be a sign that we should watch further up north along the plate boundary because a lot of times we'll see this activity work its way up north into the southern california act uh southern california area following events down south here into the gulf of california along that plate boundary so We'll uh, keep an eye on it, see what happens. USGS not reporting that, but they normally don't. Unless it's uh, above a 4.0 or so, but yeah, I see at least one 4-pointer. Uh, let's see what else we got around the globe here. Not a whole lot else happening. Uh, Mediterranean region seeing some deeper activity right now. 140 kilometer deep, 3.4. Uh, that is way up north here. Trying to see. Let's see where that's at real quick. 3.4 up in Romania. 
just coming in fairly deep earthquake there underneath the region of course there is uh, some mountain ranges up here obviously uh, some tectonic stress in that area that uh, can build up I am not interested in installing the app thank you uh, right around this region right here so they can get some big quakes there but for, for right now low 3.4 uh, one earthquake way down south here as I mentioned on the uh, Pacific Antarctica Ridge that was from yesterday not a whole lot of uh, adjustment going on here across the New Zealand area though uh, do have some threes but uh, goodness it's it's a, uh, a stressed area obviously we haven't seen any major release down here in quite a while all right let's check out uh, space weather activity here real quick today's Friday so that's definitely some good news right uh, we've seen a little bit of unexpected elevated KP index here overnight and this morning with the auroras kicking up there at the higher latitudes now Nothing was forecasted. There was no CME activity that was directed towards the Earth, but that uh, has to do with the um, the BZ component right there of the interplanetary magnetic field, the IMF, which was tipped south for a few hours. So that allowed a lot of the solar wind stream in general that's always being produced from the sun to flow right in and uh, create these storming conditions there at the higher latitudes, G1 class storm. Uh, looks like, oh, uh, yeah, made it up past that, didn't it? No, close to it. KP index of four and a half. Looks like almost to the five level. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a, looks like a little chance there. I've seen some auroras across the, the dark side of the earth. There were people maybe sleeping across uh, the Europe and uh, northern Russia area. Maybe Iceland getting in on some awesome activity as well. Uh, speaking of... Iceland. Let's go check this out real quick. Stand by here for a second. I haven't checked Iceland out in a little while. Um, no, I did not want this. Hold on a second. I want live from Iceland. It's Friday, not Monday. Got to get my brain working in the gear. It's been, it's been in gear all right. First week of the fall semester here been pretty crazy. Um, not a good view out there right now across the Iceland area looks a little foggy rainy maybe out there Let's see what we got here around the Catla volcano of course it is uh, still light out there looks like sunset but far as the eruption activity goes there across the uh, Savart Singhi area man we're not gonna see it so let's go over and check out the Icelandic Met Office here see what we have for the latest update um, So activity here, this was put out yesterday it looks like. The activity in the volcanic eruption has been quite stable for the last solar cycle. Nah, that's probably not the right wording there. <laughs> this is translated from Icelandic into English here. So for the last eruption cycle here. Um, so fairly constant lava flows mo mostly to the northwest but also to the east. Uh, land sig, land rise is still measured in the Savart Singhi, the magma chamber is draining faster than it is flowing into it than say for the recharge below the system there so uh, that's interesting you can see the mag magma fl or the uh, lava flow here stretching out further pretty neat there from a satellite image from about the 26th to the 28th um, let's see here still going down this is a comparable to the uh, last eruption here right the green back in um, fit to the eight to, okay so that's going to be our most recent level of inflation there the highest one that we had seen here now we're at the uh, little level here going down which makes sense right we're depleting the magma from below and that's obvious on that graph and it will be obvious here on the other maps here that I'll show you the uh, inflation charts we can probably check any one of these around the region of Grindavik or uh, here's Grindavik area notice our most recent inflation event there quite nicely elevated 
and then our eruption happened and then boom it goes down right so we're still going down it looks like although we're leveling off a little bit um, it, it almost looks very similar to any other last eruption that we've seen out here uh, it depletes for a little it, it runs for a little bit depletes all the volume of magma from below or whatever it can and um, seal up solidify in certain areas and then what we'll do is we'll build back up the inflation again it's just an, a rinse and repeat cycle out here with this volcano so we'll watch this here in the coming weeks see if we don't start going back up here again after potentially after the uh, surface activity ends there as far as that eruptive fisher event all right uh, let me get back here to the space weather activity um just uh a little bit of flaring activity it looks like some inflare activity very small event um, not a huge flare threat right now but we do have a couple active regions coming around the eastern limb here that may pose some threats here in the coming days this area just pretty much popped up out of the blue but it's not looking promising here it was last night but we're noticing a separation core here between the two magnetic polarities here and that is really not the best bet to see uh, any larger flaring activity but uh, yeah, we'll see if it changes uh, this region over here looks a little bit more complex in terms of the uh, magnetic uh, instability uh, that leaves us with a 10% chance for X flare M flare at 60 C flare around 99% chance or so and there's the Aurora forecast as I mentioned uh, over there on the um, dark side of the earth not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast, but occasionally when we get these uh, odd BZ components there pointing south, it uh, it allow you know that solar wind stream to flow right in <clears throat> and uh, amplify the aurora conditions out there for sure. We'll see what happens tonight though. All right, uh, meant to go back over here to the storm prediction center. Got a little slight risk category over here across portions of the Great Lakes. That uh, does include a little 2% chance there for some tornado activity in the green right here. So a little bit of uh, spinning water vapor may be in the forecast around Detroit and the Flint, Michigan area. A little bit of wind and some hail mixed in there as well for the severe weather threat today. Seismograph stations here all look pretty quiet for now, folks. There's not a whole lot going on in terms of large-scale activity. And, uh, you know, relatively speaking, it's been a quiet night and quiet morning so far in terms of larger activity. The, the last larger event was going to be that six-pointer from last night there into the uh, Kamchatka Trench at Northern End. But uh, I guess we'll just see, how, see what takes place here today. You know, California still definitely... Um, starting to move out there a little bit Hawaii let's run out here real quick and see if we got anything new to chat about uh, it looks about the same as from last night a little bit of clustering going on here across the upper east rift zone really no major change there uh, in terms of magma intrusion and a glance here at the let's see where my webcams go do 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 right here a glance at the summit region here of the upper east rift zone or of the uh, summit area <laughs> goodness shows uh you know something that we've been looking at for quite a while now just blue clear sky a few cumulus clouds out there and a little bit of volcanic gases seeping out through the tiniest of cracks out there sometimes we'll see it here in the center as well but uh yeah nothing changing out there for now looks um uh, stationary that's just the best word i can think of right now until we see another further push of magma uh, into the area from the plumbing system down here then uh, i think we're just gotta just wait and see what uh, Kilauea volcano wants to do really nothing of any uh, abnormal activity right now all right folks i'm gonna jump off here hope everyone enjoys their friday um keep an eye there on the west coast obviously activity still amplified out here just a little pause right now in between some of the larger quakes, I feel. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, Friday night update. Take care and stay safe out there.